Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new video tutorial. So before we jump in, you have different possibility to create planets and clouds, right? So you have the volumetric workflow where you really dive in into volumetric and you create volumetric clouds and things like that. In this tutorial, I want to show you the texture base workflow. All right, so here we are in Lightwave layout and let's get started. So the first thing I click on item and add a null and I call this null geo and press OK. The next step is I'm going into the model tab, create geometry sphere. I create tessellated sphere because I have more geometry than later on when I use the displacement map. The size actually does not matter. In this case, create a 10 by 10 meter sphere for now. And I use the subdivision of four. All right, so here we have our first sphere. We stay in the model tab, toggle the sub patch on. And you can see that the sphere gets tessellated even more. Right? and it's creating more geometry. In the surface tab of that sphere, we can turn on smoothing. And as you can see now, it's nice and smooth. All right, so let's bring in the materials, the textures that we need. And for that, I'm clicking on the image editor. And what I do is I just select the images that I need and click and drag it into the image editor. So I have a 10K map from the earth. I have a cloud map, an 8K cloud map, and I have the normal map 8K or from the earth as well. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to set up the color space. So for color maps, change to sRGB. For grayscale, change to linear, linear, and normal map set to linear and linear as well. From the earth map, we need a second map. So what I do is I select the earth texture map and go to clone duplicate. It's creating a second map. And what I do here is I change this to linear and linear. And I also go in here and turn down the saturation, increase the contrast quite a bit. Okay, this actually will be our displacement map for the terrain. So let's close that down. Now we go into the surface editor. We already have the sphere selected and we go into the node editor. So here we have to bring in the same textures. So in Lightwave 2023, you can click and drag the images from your hard drive directly into the material editor and this window pops up and then you can choose what type image, image sampler, normal map, normal map sampler. Press OK and this comes in. So double click, change to Y, spherical projection, automatic sizing and plug the color into the color. And you can see that the map is already projected correctly to the sphere. So you can see this line here. This line is just in the viewport when you start the render BPR or render in general, you will not see this line. Okay, so it's just a viewport thing. All right, so the next thing that we need is the normal map. So we click and drag the normal map inside. And as you can see, this window pops up again. And this time we choose a normal map, press OK. And what it actually does is change this value automatically for you, linear, linear, which is cool. So here again, Y, spherical, automatic sizing, all right, let's plug the normal map output into the normal map input, start the VPR and check if the normal map works correctly. So let's zoom in here a bit. And you can see that the normal map takes place. Now to give the earth a bit more plasticity, a bit more feeling to it, 
I will apply a displacement map. So we do this now, go to the surface editor, double click. Now what we do is we take this image node, press control, copy, control V to copy this node, double click, and we change this to our second map that we created for the displacement map. Okay, so I expand that and I organize my nodes a bit right there. So here we take the Luma output into the displacement input. So to see the displacement map on our geometry, because we're working in the surface displacement map, we have to select our Earth sphere object and open up the properties panel. And here you can see the surface displacement. Check that on, double click, and here we can define the distance. So let's set the distance here to three meters for now. And you can see what it does. The displacement works, so we can see clearly that the displacement works that way, but the tessellation or the geometry is way too low to displace correctly. All right, so to set up the displacement map more defined and more correct, we have to change the values for the display sub patch level and the render sub patch level. The good thing is these two values can be different. To see in the VPR the displacement correct, you can increase the value here to let's say about 40. So you can now see that the displacement is way more detailed and much more clear to see. The downside of this setting here is that now this sphere is a high polygon mesh and working with a that high dense mesh in layout can become very laggy when you have more objects with a high tessellation value. So I use this display sub patch level only to define the strength and the detail amount for my displacement. So now what I do is I decrease the power of the displacement. So let's type in 0.2 and you can see we have displacement. So let's go back into the subdivision. And as I said before, when you leave this displace of patch to 40, you have a very dense mesh. But as we know that with 40, the displacement looks pretty good. So what I set is I set this value to 40 for the render time and I bring this value back to let's say 10. So the displacement does not look as good as before in the viewport, but when I render, I will have this 40% tessellation that we had before. All right, let's move on with the cloud layer. So come up here, model, geometry, sphere. Again, tessellated sphere, and we make the sphere a bit bigger. So let's say about 11 meter. All right, in the model tab, toggle sub patch to create more tessellation. Go to the surface editor. And as you can see, we have here the cloud sphere, turn on smooth, and we have a nice round and smooth sphere. Let's jump into the node editor. And here I bring in a cloud texture right there. And this is an image map, press OK double click, set to spherical, Y, automatic sizing. In the editing tab, what I do is I increase the contrast, take the Luma output to transparency input. And you can see that the map works, but it's not working correctly because it's inverted. Okay, so what we can do is we can double click on this map, go to the edit, and then into the editing, invert. And now you can see that now works. Correct. So in the material itself, I 
bring down the roughness and speckler. And as you can see, we have now the cloud layer on top of our planet. So when we jump right back into the surface editor, into the cloud material, when we use the Luma output for the displacement, and we open up the properties for this cloud sphere, again, we have to set up the subdivision, right? The display sub patch level to 40. To see the displacement correct, turn on the surface displacement and let's set this value to one. So now you can see that the displacement works, but it's the opposite direction. We cannot put minus value here. So we have to working with positive values. Now we inverted this map to cut out the clouds from the rest, okay? But here in the displacement map, we need to invert it again so we have the right direction for the displacement. And Lightwave has a node that called invert. So we have this invert node. So what we do is just plug in this Luma output into the invert and the output invert to the input displacement. And voila, the displacement is now in the right direction, but it's way too strong. So back into the object properties, into the surface displacement, let's bring this down to 0 0.1 and let's see that looks pretty good to me. So you can see that we have a thickness in the cloud layer and the cloud now looks way more natural. To be honest, it's not volumetric, but it gives me the feeling that this cloud has some thickness. It gives the cloud layer the feeling that the clouds has some structure, has some feeling to it. So let's close everything down and we will start to creating the atmosphere. All right, now let's go and create the atmosphere, the last layer for this planet. So come up here, model, geometry, sphere, again, tessellated sphere, and we choose a 12 by 12 by 12 meter tessellated sphere. Perfect. In the model tab, toggle saw patch, surface editor, atmosphere, smoothing on, perfect. Double click, go right into the surface editor. All right, so here we need three nodes. The first node that we need is we need a color. We need a mix node. Don't use the material mixer, use the tools mixer node. And then we need a personnel right there. Output color into background color input. Result of the fennel in the foreground color. Double click on the mixer node, set it to multiply. So the color output goes into the luminous color. The inverse output goes into transparency input. Then we change this color, double click on the color node. And we choose a light blue color for now, right there. Okay, so now we go to the light, environment light properties and turn that off. So we can see the planet more clear and double click on the principled BSDF material and increase the luminous power, let's say 200. And you can see now that we have this atmosphere, but it looks not correct yet. So what we have to do in the principal BSDF settings, we have to increase transmittance distance. So now it's set to one meter. So increase this value 10 meters. And now you can see that it starts looking pretty good. Then we select the light and bring the light out. Press the M key and choose the earth as a target of the light. Switch the top view. 
and set the position of the light where you like it, where you find this is a good spot for the light. You can see this sharp line here. So with the light selected, go into the properties and then we increase the angle a bit more to have a softer fall off and we do not affect specular. So the last step is I'm going back into the surface editor, into the cloud material, right click. I pick up the output Luma and plug it into the luminous input. You can see that the map is the wrong direction. So we need another invert node. Plug that in here and plug that in here. And so now you can also see the clouds on this darker side of the planet. So now the next step will be just to tweaking around the settings, the values, just slightly adjustments and stuff like that until you find the earth that you like. So I hope this tutorial was helpful. As I said before, there are multiple ways how you can create a planet earth, the volumetric approach, or like in this case, the texture and displacement approach. And yes, maybe this planet Earth looks not as realistic as it looks in real life. But I mean, we are artists and we can have a little bit of artistic freedom. So I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. If you have any question, please feel free to post in the comments. And as always, See you next time in another tutorial very soon. Thank you for listening and see you next time. Bye everybody.